think I'm going to have a word with a consultant myself. What word would that be? Well, ask him how long before Dad will be mobile again. Why? You don't want to do this anymore? You want to tuck the whole thing in and go back to London? Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. No, but it's close. Only I promised to take your daddy for a stroll this morning, so I could tell him then. I just, I just don't want to be a private detective for the rest of my life. <laughs> You'd rather be an out-of-work actor? Honey, this is your best role yet. I've never seen you so focused. Thanks. You get your suit on like you have now. New client. Oh, I guess. And you sit there behind your daddy's desk and you look like Philip Marlowe and Sam Spade rolled into one. <laughs> I can open it again if we need the fresh air. Do you mind if I smoke? Uh, no, no. Uh, there's an ashtray in here somewhere. There we are. Thank you. So, Mrs. Donovan, just how is it you think we can help? I'd like you to follow my husband and find out if he's seeing another woman. That is the kind of thing we do, yeah. No, no, actually, I know he's seeing another woman, because... because I know him. Right. What I don't know is who she is. And, uh, well, whether this is just another of his flings, which you'd think I'd be used to by now, or is it something I should be more worried about? How about a little rest on this bench? Uh, only if you want one. Oh, I need one. Well, okay. Oh. Maybe you should stay here while I go get the car. You do. I'll take all my clothes off and go for a swim. <laughs> you would too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you something, and I want an honest answer. What? How's Ben? Well, how's he finding all this? Running the agency while I get fitted with my new hips. Loves it. <laughs> Not the impression I get. Daddy, I sleep with him. He tells me everything. If you say so. Because I appreciate the two of you coming up. I just don't want to become a burden. He loves every minute. To tell you the truth, I think he's inherited some genetic stuff that disposes him towards private investigating. Well, from me? <laughs> you think so? I'd say he was born for it. I have to warn you, Mrs. Donovan, surveillance is time-consuming and expensive. The cost doesn't matter. Fine. Uh, but what would help reduce it? I mean, is there a particular time when you think your husband might be seeing this other woman? Afternoons. Right. He spends every morning in the shop, then come lunchtime, he leaves Graham in charge. Graham's his assistant. I see. And off he goes. And sometimes won't be back till just before closing. And this is every afternoon? No, just certain ones. Today, for instance. You think he'll be meeting this woman today? I'm pretty sure, yes. Can I ask you how you know that? Because of the way he behaved towards me this morning. He was very affectionate. And it's when he's affectionate. And that's when I know he's going to be spending the day with somebody else. We walked as far as the central pier. What? He's trying to wear out his new hips. Then we had a rest. And he asked me how you were finding running the agency. And you said? No, wait. I know what you said. You said I'm loving it. Tell me about this new class. Oh, so I'm right. You did. Another follow my husband job. Aren't they all? What is it about this town that nobody is happily married? Too much ozone, you think? Or too many hotels with vacancy signs. <laughs> his shop. Vincent Donovan, men's outfitters. Uh, we're looking for a green Audi that he parks around the back. And he's seeing this other woman today? Yeah, his wife reckons she can tell by how he behaves towards her in the morning. <laughs> Let me guess, he's nice to her. How did you know? Deceitful men always overcompensate. Oh, I would ask what deceitful women do, but then you'll say... No such uh, thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, hey, there he goes. I've got him. I've got him. Do you have the camera? Uh, in there, and the recorder.
We're assuming that he's waiting there for the floozy. Can we call her that? I can. Then we're assuming that, yeah. Uh, Donovan case. Uh, Donovan case. Uh, Tuesday the 28th, time... One twenty. One twenty. Observing subject parked on Queen's Road. Who's he approaching? A young woman is approaching. <laughs> young? Uh, subject gets out of the car to greet her. Uh, give me the camera. Give me... Thanks. Fluzy is aged at least mid-thirties, has blonde hair, which may be a wig. In fact, I'd give odds. Aryan in looks, that sort of square face pussycat thing that older men seem to go for. And what is that she's wearing? Okay, let's go. Some kind of hideous pink suit over a white top with white leather boots. Oh, well, you're trying, honey. We can't deny that. 205. Have followed subject to the Hourglass Restaurant, Cleveland. Subject and female companion have gone into restaurant and are occupying corner table. Oh, yeah. One tuna, one plowman. Oh, great. And water and orange juice. Uh, I'm continuing surveillance. You want the plowmans? Uh, whichever. Oh. What I'd really like is some clear shots of them when they come out. Hmm. I mean, a lot closer than we can get from here. So, I've had this brilliant idea. Yes? Well, we go right up to the door, both of us, in full view, and make it look like it's you I'm photographing. And hope they won't notice a six-foot black woman sprawled across the steps. What will they do, step over me? They'll assume you're a model and I'm photographing you for some magazine. Hmm. Now, a nice, big smile. Do you want me to stick my bum out? <laughs> I didn't dare ask. Right, they're coming. They're coming. Uh, look into the camera. That's good. Yep. Big smile. Lovely. Now, a little bit more serious. Yep. Smouldering. Uh, like you really, really fancy me. Oh, come on. Pretend. That's it. That's great. Now, just hold that. Now, just, just come round. Come, come round a little bit. I want some of them getting into the camera. Great. Now hold it, hold it, and just two more, which this time really are of you. So, big smile. And what do you want pictures of me for? Because I love you. Of course I want pictures of you. <laughs> Mineral water. Thank you. And a pint for you, Dad. Right. So, is this right, what Anna's telling me? We take on a new client, then do the surveillance and the report all on the same day. We did. Have we set a record? Mm. Or even come near. Well, why does that not surprise me? I once had a case. A woman came in, said, I want you to follow my husband, and gave me his photograph. I said, if this is him, then forget the following. I can tell you right now what he's up to. See, I recognised him. He'd been coming in my local and uh, formed quite a relationship with the barmaid. So I told the wife, case was over, and she hadn't been in the office ten minutes. Which makes us look pretty slow. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But have you ever had a rival? Rival? Well, we were snapping this guy and his floozy. Uh, subject and female companion. Snapping them as they came out of the restaurant and drove off, which is when Ben pointed out... We weren't the only ones taking pictures. How come? There was somebody else. Another photographer. He was on the other side of the car, so we hadn't noticed him. But he was there all the time, taking pictures of them, just the same as we were. <laughs> I'll get you the ashtray. Thank you. So, you followed my husband? We did, yes. Uh, we followed him from the shop and observed him meeting a, a, a lady and then taking her to a restaurant. In fact, it was the hourglass in Cleveland's. I believe it's very nice. It looked nice, yeah. Anyway, I've, uh, I've done a written report, which is here, and you can take away. And also, here, we've got some photographs. Thank you. Which, of course, you can also take away. Oh, yes. You recognise her? I recognise the type. I suppose you might say it's me ten years ago. Fifteen. I'll put them in an envelope. Can I ask, how did they, you know, act towards one another? 
well. Did they hold hands? Did you see them kissing? They were doing both of those things, yes. I don't mind it when they get angry. Wait till I get my hands on him, I'll kill the lying scumbag. Or like that woman last week, I mean, she was delighted. It was the evidence she needed to take her husband for every penny he'd got, but... Mrs. Donovan wasn't either of those? She just sat there looking at the pictures, then started crying. I had to give her my handkerchief. The way you told it, she knew anyway. Mm, I think she was hoping she was wrong. Okay, honey, but you didn't make her unhappy. She was unhappy before she came to us. I'm not denying that. But... And the person who made her that way is her louse of a husband. All you've done is given her a weapon so she could fight back. And will she? Hope so. Pity we can't be there. I'd give anything to see her lousy husband's face when she puts the pictures in front of him. This was the husband. Left a message on the answer phone. Saying what exactly? That he wanted to see me. Oh, well, no. No. You don't have anything to do with that. Wanted to see you why? Didn't say. Just went on about how I'd done a good job for his wife. So now he wants me to do the same for him. What, and follow her? I, I, I've no idea. A private investigator is like a solicitor. You can't go representing both sides of a dispute. You've already been employed by her. Let him go and find somebody else. He didn't say he wants me to follow her. Then what else? Well, I don't know. No. And you don't want to know. I'm going to make some tea. Actually, I'll tell you what he wants. Oh. You know. Revenge is what he wants. You arrange to meet him. It'll be under the pier at midnight and he'll be carrying an iron bar. So just wipe that message and forget you ever heard it. Good advice. Yeah. You gonna follow it? No. Why am I not surprised? I thought I might go to his shop, turn up when he's not expecting me, then see what he has to say. Morning. Can I be of assistance or are you just looking? I'm actually looking for Mr. Donovan if he's around. He is. Yes. He's in his office. What? You want to speak to him personally? Well, I think it's more he wants to speak to me. And I don't want disturbing. Well, but you know you've got the pals of Leary, right? uh, You keep him occupied. Don't order anything. Just keep him occupied. Oh. Right. Yes. I don't know why I employ him. So, Mr... Uh... Lomax. Ben Lomax. You're the private eye? The private investigator, yes. You're quick off the mark, I'll grant you that. I only left that message this morning. Uh, Mr Donovan, I was employed by your wife. <laughs> Don't I know it. Oh, but finish my marriage for me. Well, the point is, having been employed by her, it wouldn't be ethical for me to do the same sort of job for you. What? You think I want you to follow her? Well... <laughs> I think you'd be wasting your time. I think she's well past all that. Mind, I didn't think she'd be up to employing a private detective. She surprised me there, so who knows? Okay, uh, perhaps I've jumped to the wrong conclusion. So why do you want to see me? Here, have a look at these. And he handed me four photographs of himself and girlfriend coming out of that restaurant. That we took? No, that's the point. Not that we took. Ah, yes, the other photographer. These pictures came in the post together with a letter that told me I had to pay £5,000 or else copies would go to my wife. Blackmail. Blackmail. Only now here's the bit that will make you smile. At least it did me. What the blackmailer doesn't know is that you'd already spiked his guns. Thanks to you, the wife knows everything. So I don't have to cough up a one penny piece. 
glad we could help. And here's the letter. Gives an address there to send the money. Weatherall Street. But by the looks of it, it's one of those accommodation addresses. So I don't think that's going to get us anywhere. Uh, get us anywhere? But, Mr Donovan, just what is it that you're expecting me to do? Somebody's being blackmailed, they go to the police. He doesn't want to. He's not going to pay the money anyway. All he wants is to know whether or not the girlfriend's involved. The floozy? Yeah, whether she's a part of it. Why does it matter? He's hardly going to go on seeing her whether she was a part of it or not. Well, he might be. Thing is, I... Well, I love Melody. I, I'm crazy about her. I, I think she's wonderful and I, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Right. Though not if she's blackmailing me, of course, which is why it's important I find out. So if he finds out she's not involved in the blackmail, then what? He's going to leave his wife for her? Don't know what he's going to do. I'm not sure I want to. I hope you told him we're not in the business of helping rats get out of traps. Well, see, all he knows about her is her name, which, by the way, is Melody Griffin. Melody? But that's all he knows. She rings him at the shop, tells him where she wants picking up, and then afterwards tells him where she wants dropping off. So it should be easy for him to dump her. I mean, come on. Why doesn't he just cut his losses and get out? Well, because he's thinking, why should he if she's not involved in the blackmail scam? And you know what I'm thinking? Why should we help a serial adulterer cheat on his wife? Hang on. Hello? Ben, it's Vince Donovan. I'm at the hourglass, like I told you. Melody's just come to powder her nose, so I thought I'd check... We'll be right there. Be right there? Only I'm going to have to shut down now, because she's on her way back. Okay. Who was that you were talking to? Oh, just Graham at the shop. Check there haven't been any disasters. And why are you looking at me like that? Because you're beautiful. Thank you. And, uh, I've something to show you. Have a look at these. Pictures of us? Uh, taken last time we were here. Who oh, by? Vince, who took these? Well... That's what I've been wondering. Vince, is this some kind of joke? Because No joke. Somebody's tried to blackmail me. They sent me these and a letter saying they'll send copies to my wife unless I pay £5,000. No. Now, I have to ask, which I don't like doing, but I have to. Do you know who might have done this? You think it's me? You think I'm part no, of some... No, no, honey, I, I swear... I've never for a minute even thought such a thing. But somebody took these pictures, and that somebody must have waited outside and so knew we were going to be here. Well, it's nothing to do with me. It's basic surveillance. It's what we do. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what Dad says. And we just provide information. What people do with it is their business. You're quoting your father to justify this. Yeah, but also, I mean, this man's being blackmailed. And deserves it. Nobody deserves it. Anyway, th they're here. They're coming out. And remember, this time we follow the floozy. Hi. Hi. Babe is home. Hi, babe. Mm. Oh, get baby a drink. Armand, Vince, been giving you a hard time. You wouldn't believe. First, it's all the usual shit about how beautiful I am and he's fallen in love with me. Like they all do. Then he pulls out the pictures you took. He had them with him? Puts them on the table. And what did you say? Well, I'm so shocked, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and then I come over all frightened, because, I mean, who can be doing this? Somebody must be watching us. And he didn't even think you might have set him up. Oh, I think it crossed his mind, yeah. But with Vince, it's what's going on between his legs that matters, not his head. So I was able to talk him out of that one. No, he thinks it's somebody that knows who he is and has seen a chance to screw him. Oh, babe, I left my sinkers in the car. Do you think you could get them for me? Sure. Keep them here. So what's he going to do? Going to pay. Five grand? Promise me. Yeah. He talked about what would happen if his wife found out and how she'd probably divorce him and that'd cost him a fortune. So what else can he do? So maybe, well, what do you think? Maybe with this one, we could go back for seconds. Take the five, then you carry on seeing him. I take some more pictures and we put the screws in for another five. Maybe. Siggy's babe. I'm going. I'm going. Oh, sorry, we're uh, just about to close. Oh, 
You're the gentleman that was here this morning. I just wondered if I could have a quick word with Mr. Donovan. Yes, I'm sure. If you'd care to come this way. So, go on. Tell me. Well, uh, we followed the lady after you dropped her off, and she had her own car park nearby. And we followed that to um, number 24 Orchard Drive, South Shore. That's where she lives? Uh, it looked like it. And then, just to confirm things, we ran her name and address through the computer. Oh, like I do when I have a new credit customer. We probably use the same databases. Could be. Anyway. Which told us, yes, she owns the property with a 40,000 mortgage. Okay. Uh, Melody Griffin seems to be a real name. Age 36. 36? Uh, that's what it says. Tell me, 28. Go on. Unmarried. No record of any children. Couldn't find any record of employment either. A uh, self-employed beautician. Oh, okay. Maybe she doesn't want the tax man to know. Anything else? Uh, she was found guilty of soliciting June 94, September 97, January 98, then September 99. Charged with demanding money with menaces, found guilty and served a six-month prison sentence. Shit. And one other thing that happened while we were watching the house. A man came out to collect something from a car. Well, the thing is, well, both my colleague and I are sure that it was the same man we saw waiting for you to come out of the hourglass restaurant. We noticed then that he had a camera and looked like he was taking pictures. I've been set up. It does look like it. Shit. I've done a written report for you to keep, but they're the main points. Little tart. The lying little... Okay. Okay, well, thank you, Mr Lomax. You've done a good job. Save me making an even bigger fool of myself than I have already. Uh, looks like Graham's put the grills down. Gonna have to let you out the back way. You got us locked in here, Graham. Oh, oh yes. Sorry, uh, shall I... Uh... No, no, it's okay. Yeah, watch this. Uh, Graham, this shirt, what colour is it? Uh, a colour? Yes, uh, I'd say... Uh... Green. You would? No. No, green's pretty well spot on. Thank you. Thank you. And what colour would you say? Looks pink to me. And me. See? This is what I have to put up with. I've a wife who doesn't trust me. I've a girlfriend who's out to take me for every penny. And if that weren't bad enough, I've an assistant who's colour blind. Can you believe that? No. You can't. Just be grateful, Mr. Lomax. Be grateful it's my life and not yours. I told you not even to see the man. Not even to return his call. And what do you do? You <laughs> work for him. Yeah. And proved you wrong in the process. Me wrong? How was I wrong? Well, you said Mr. Donovan was out for revenge. Hmm. Well, he wasn't. He was looking for help because he was being blackmailed. By his own mistress. I know I shouldn't be, but I'm almost on her side. And so now you've told him this, what's he going to do about it? <laughs> No idea. Only thing I know for sure is he's not going to be handing over any five grand. <laughs> Hi. Babe, what's the matter? I've been to Weatherall Street. And? Nothing. I said, will you check? Because I'm expecting an important parcel. So he checks. But no. Donovan's menswear? Hi, Vince. Melody. So how's things? Busy. How are you? Oh, okay. I wondered, have you, you know, paid that money? Yep. Really? You've sent 5,000 to the address they told you? I told you I would, and I have. Right. So, when are we going to get together? Soon. 
I just want to make sure these people have gone away. You heard him. He sent the money. Says he has. Well, why should he lie? What about Weatherall Street? You think you can trust them? They've been okay before. Baby, you've been straight with me. What are you trying to say? Maybe your debts. Okay, but just tell me. Jesus, you think I've taken the money? But what else? So you go and ask them whether I've collected anything? That's your side of the operation. I don't go near that. Only now you don't trust me. I trust you, babe. Just what else can I think? Think what the hell you like. So, what's on the agenda for today? Oh, watching and waiting, I should think. You may be paying a few of these bills. Do you want coffee? Oh, please. You've got a visitor. Oh. Yes, can I help? Are you Mr Lomax? Mr. Ben Lomax? Yes. Mr. Lomax, I'm Detective Sergeant Thompson. And can I ask who you are? Certainly, officer. I'm Miss Anna Rochelle Miami Brown. Right. And what, you two work together? Play together, too. Uh, we're running the agency for my father. What's this about? What this is about is we're investigating the death of a Miss Melody Griffin. Does that name mean anything to you? Melody? She's dead. She's dead, yes. What, an accident? I don't think you could call it that, no. She was strangled, then her body dumped into the sea. Somebody walking his dog found her this morning underneath the North Pier. Ah, uh, it's here on the front page. Blackpool woman murdered, body found on beach. Poor girl. But I still don't understand. Because you won't listen. I'll listen, all right, if somebody will just tell me... Why did the cops come looking for you? Well... Oh, we... except, of course... See? I can understand it would look pretty strange that you've been working for both the wife and the husband. Which, can I remind you, I did advise you not to do. Why? You knew Melody was going to be murdered. I knew something bad would come of it. But then why listen to me? I've only been doing the job Daddy, 30 years. if you want to know, the police came to us because after they managed to identify the body, right? Right. They went to talk to Melody's boyfriend. What boyfriend? The one she lives with. Who'd taken the blackmail photographs. Okay. They talked to him and he told them about Vincent Donovan, how they set up the blackmail scam. Uh-huh. Then they questioned Vincent Donovan and he told them about employing me and that's why they came to talk to us. Happy now? I was happy already. I just wanted to be a little better informed. Well, now you are. <sighs> but, but what I still don't know, what did the police think you knew that they didn't? You followed Melody Griffin on two separate occasions. Once when we were working for the wife, second time for the husband. Would you like a coffee, officer? No, I'm all right, thanks. Let's take the wife. You reported back to her and told her it was Melody Griffin that her husband was meeting, yes? Yes. How did she react to that? She was upset. Did she say anything about what she intended to do? No. Nothing at all? No. You mean like, if I get my hands on that woman, I'm going to kill her? That sort of thing? Let's talk about Mr Donovan. He wanted us to try and find out if Melody was involved in blackmailing him. And you told him... Well, we thought she was. Since it was her boyfriend taking the pictures. So then did Mr Donovan say anything about how he intended to resolve the situation? Just that he wasn't going to pay. And that was all they wanted to know? What the Donovans might have said to you? Yep. I don't think he rated us too highly. Meaning what? Well, he more or less asked us what the hell we were doing playing private detectives anyway. <sighs> Strange line of work to be in, isn't it? I think I explained that my father... Why fa strange? We just help people who have problems. <laughs> and you think you're qualified to do that? We're qualified enough. We're human beings. So you think you might solve this particular case? No. We might. Well, <laughs> be sure and let us know. We wouldn't want to be still investigating in six months' time when you've got the answers. <laughs> Irregular police. They're all as suspicious of private investigators. I'd call it more contemptuous. Can be that too. But of course, uh, Ben, where they do have a point, this whole business is no longer anything to do with you. You should never have got involved with the husband anyway. You did mention that. And now it's murder. Well, let me tell you, we do surveillance, tracing and credit checks. We do not do murders. Melody Griffin. May she rest in peace.
was into blackmail. So my question would be, who else was she blackmailing besides Vincent Donovan? All right, the police are concentrating on him because he's her most recent victim, but how many more have there been? All with a good reason for wanting her out of the way. You know, I think your daddy maybe was right when he said we've got to keep out of it. Leave it to the grown-up policeman. I just think I might go back to Orchard Drive. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This is what Orchard Drive where Melody lived. Yeah. And do what? No idea. Want to come? I said I'd take Daddy to the hospital. Yeah? Hi. Um, can I talk to you about Melody Griffin? Are you the press? But no. I'm the person who took pictures of her outside the Hourglass restaurant at the same time you did. I was working for the man she was blackmailing. So what do you want? Well, um, I'm just trying to clear my client's name and maybe help clear yours at the same time. What did the doctor say? Uh, told me I was doing remarkably well. I said, so why I'm in such pain all the time? He said, that's your body protesting at what we've done to it and gave me this prescription, which I suppose is to stop it protesting. I don't know. Should I see if I can get these while you wait here? I'll finish your coffee first. What's Ben doing? Oh, this and that. Hey, you've got to keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't overstep the mark with these cases. Because there's something about him, all it has been, he doesn't know when to stop. You're a private detective. Really? <sighs> well, it surprises me too. Uh, and look... I'll be honest, it doesn't give me the right to ask you anything. Though it also means you can tell me anything you like and I can't do a damn thing about it. I didn't kill her. But you were blackmailing Vincent Donovan. Yeah. Was this something you and Melody had done before? With other men? A couple of times, yeah. What's the police know? I've told them. So, one of these other men might have killed her? What I said. The police have checked it out and they don't think so. So, who do you think killed her? Vincent Donovan. Yeah? I'll tell you why I think that. Because the others were scared. Just wanted to pay and get out. But him? No, he was fooling around with us. Telling her he'd sent the money when he hadn't. Right. But Mel believed him. So she got it in her head. I must have taken it. Which I suppose is what he was after doing. Setting us against one another. Anyway... That afternoon... Uh, which? That they reckon she died. Yeah. She told me she was going to go and see Mr. Donovan and sort out the business about the money. And I said, okay, you do that. So she went. Never came back. Hiya, oh, yeah, it's me. Hello? Hello? Anybody there? Oh, I, I suppose you're still with Dad. Um, anyway, I thought I'd let you know, I've, I've been to Orchard Drive and spoken to the boyfriend, um, who thinks Vincent Donovan killed Melody. So I think I might have another word with our Mr. Donovan, or maybe Mrs. even. Uh, which I know you'd say I shouldn't, but, well, you can tell me that later. <laughs> Love you. Mrs. Donovan. Oh, it's the, uh... uh ben Lomax. I hope you don't mind me calling. No, no, come in. I'm uh, in the conservatory if you'd like to come through. I suppose I should have phoned, but... No, that's perfectly all right. Do sit down, please. Thank you. And uh, can I offer you something? I'm just having a drink myself. Gin and tonic or... With... Uh, I won't, thanks. Well, say if you change your mind, then. You know about Melody Griffin, the woman who... Oh, yes. Yes, it's terrible. Actually, I'm glad you've come. Because you're the one person I can ask. Ask? Which I probably shouldn't, but after all, you do already know a good deal about the state of my marriage, more than anybody else. Do you think my husband might have killed her? Because she was trying to blackmail him? Yes. 
Uh, have you asked him that? Oh, he says I'm being ridiculous. Says, why should you have done such a thing when the blackmail couldn't possibly have worked since I already knew what was going on? But you see, I'm not sure that's the point. No? When I first challenged Vincent about his relationship, he first of all denied it. Which, I suppose, is what you would expect. I suppose it is. But then, I showed him the photographs he'd taken. Well, threw them at him, actually. And I won't deny I'd had a drink or two. And anyway, I ended up calling her all sorts of terrible names that I'd rather not repeat. No. And Vincent defended her. He said she wasn't the things I'd said, that she was attractive and... And good company, everything I'm not, apparently. The point is, I think he was very hurt when he found she was only interested in taking his money. Very hurt and angry. And you think that might have... Uh... <laughs> Made him kill her. Yes. Yeah. Can I be of assistance, or are you just looking? Can you tell me if Mr. Donovan is around? Vincent Donovan? Is he expecting you? No, I doubt he'll be doing that. All the same, I'd like to have a word. Well, certainly, yes. Would you care to come this way? Are you sure I can't offer you something? Sure. I wish I had your self-control. Mine went out some time ago. Along with my figure. The police must have talked to your husband. Oh, for hours. Tell you the truth, I didn't think they were ever going to let him out. I thought, so this is it then. Over the years, I've had reason to speculate on just how my marriage might end, but Vincent locked up for murder was something I'd never even dreamt of. But then they let him go? Yes. You don't happen to know why? Well, I suppose they don't have enough evidence. Uh, has he told you that? Well, not in so many words. It's not a subject we can easily discuss. No, please. Please, what are you doing? Please, let me go. And where's your husband now? Probably still at the shop. Or he'll have called somewhere for a drink. Anything rather than come home. Okay. Well, um... I think I should be going. Oh, no, I think this might be him. Hello? Oh. We're in here. Mr... Uh, Lomax. Mr. Lomax, the private detective is called. He's been keeping me company. Well, I... Sorry to intrude. That's okay. She settled again. He always speaks to me. I'll take that as a yes. So, poor Melody, eh? Yes. Has the wife offered you a drink? Yes, I have. That I'm all right, thanks. Thought you were giving up smoking. I intend to. Do you have any idea who might have killed Melody? Yeah, I'd say, and I've said it to the police. I'd say try the boyfriend, the man with the camera. Uh huh. Well, it seems pretty straightforward to me. They fell out as thieves will, and he did for her. Actually, I've talked to the boyfriend before coming here. What? The police are employing you now. No, nobody is. I just feel I've got a vested interest. And do you have any theories? Who did kill her? You're going to tell us? I can't tell you. I don't know. But you have your suspicions. Tell us about them. We won't be offended, will we, my dear? I shan't be. Who's your main suspect? Me, the wife, or the boyfriend? Who's favourite? 
might be somebody else altogether. No. No, I don't think you believe that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Please don't kill me. I'll do whatever you want. Please, help me, somebody. Ah! Help me! When Melody rang and asked you about the money, you said you'd already paid it. Oh, I was lying. It's what he's good at. And this led to an argument between her and her boyfriend because each thought the other was keeping the money for themselves. I imagine it might have. Oh, he's told me it, it did. <laughs> right. At which point she says she's going to go to your shop and sort this out. He told you that too. Yeah. Then you're out of me. So did you see her? No. I've already told the police I wasn't at the shop on what they refer to as the afternoon in question. So where were you? Golf club. Playing in the president's handicap, as any number of people will testify and have already. So, if Melody did go to the shop, she'd have talked to Graham, which would have been an education for her. She'd have enjoyed that. Graham does his best. I'm sure he does. Trouble is, what kind of best can a colourblind halfwit manage? Please don't start on Graham. Just as a way of getting at me. Mr. Lomax here has seen what I have to put up with, and why do I? Why don't I just send him back to the institution he came from? Be quiet. Because I can't. Because see, Mr. Lomax, Graham, Graham is her brother. <laughs> no, don't, please. I don't want to die. He's been in all sorts of institutions since he was a kid. Then they let him out, and she asked me, "Can I find him work?" Well, I should have said no, but I'm a. And uh, would he have known about you seeing Melody? Well, I've caught him before listening in on the phone in the shop. He might well have, yeah. And then once, when I was meeting her, I thought I saw him watching. And he wouldn't have liked it. No, his sister's the only one who has ever had any time for him, so he lives for her. Would do anything to protect her. Jesus, yeah, it all makes sense. Go left, left ear. No, if Melody turned up looking for me and found Graham instead, then he knew who she was. Then he'd see it as a chance to pay back his sister for all she'd ever done for him. He'd see it as the way to saving our marriage. Nobody here. I wouldn't be too sure. He hasn't set the alarm, which he would have if he'd left for good. Let's try upstairs. Upstairs? Well, there's a couple of storerooms where he sometimes likes to hang out. I've never known just what he does up here. Maybe now we're going to find out. What the? Anna? Okay, Graham. No! Graham, wait! You're comfortable there. I'm fine. Now this is my chance to look after you. I don't need looking after. They said you might still be in shock. Look, can I ask? Unless you'd rather not talk about it. I'm going to have to anyway. You went to the shop looking for Ben, which was my fault. Nothing was your fault. But the only person there was this Graham, who led me upstairs and then put something over my mouth. Yeah, they think it was chloroform. <laughs> Next thing I knew, he had tied me down to this table, and, and he was trying to strangle her when we got there. And then he jumped. Took one look at us and then jumped straight through the window, landed in the street, broke his ankle. Still there when the police arrived. And this was all because he thought he had to keep young women away from his sister's philandering husband. Well, plus I suppose he was getting an appetite for it. Hmm. Good thing you didn't take my advice and leave well alone. Oh, you mean I did something right? No, but you got the right result. Okay, I'm going to put some soup on for anybody that wants it. Thank you for rescuing me. Oh, I had to. I love you. You're a great detective. You think? Blackpool's best. That's if we're staying. We're staying. For now. In the Blackpool Detective, Ben was played by Jason Doane. Anna by Abigail Ramsey, Stan John Branwell, and Melody Deborah McAndrew. Vince was played by Glenn Cunningham, Beatrice Sarah Parks, Colin Kieran Cunningham, and Graham and Detective Thompson were played by Mark Chatterton. The Blackpool Detective was written by Peter Worley and directed in Manchester and on location in Blackpool by Pauline Harris.